today we're going to talk about some different sources of water pollution within a watershed. But what exactly is a watershed? A watershed is an area where all the water underneath it or draining off of it collects in the same place. So when it rains or snow melts and runs off the land, all that water ends up in a river or a lake. We'll use this watershed model to demonstrate how different areas within a watershed contribute to water pollution. We'll start with industrial sources of pollution. Examples of industrial sources include manufacturing plants and oil refineries. Industrial plants have strict water quality regulations and are not generally a concern. However, plant malfunction could cause hazardous pollutants to be discharged into rivers and lakes. Sewage treatment plants can also be a source of pollution. Sewage treatment plants also have strict water quality regulations and are not typically sources of pollution. However, a plant malfunction could release bacteria polluted water into rivers and lakes. Private septic systems can be a threat to public health and cause groundwater contamination if the system is damaged or not working properly. Urban areas can have numerous sources of pollution, including construction sites, residential areas, paved surfaces such as roads, driveways, and parking lots, and stormwater drains. First, let's start with construction sites. Without plants to keep soil in place or silt fencing to keep everything on site, soil can run off into lakes and rivers. Residential areas can have a few different sources of pollution. In residential areas, there are numerous sources of pollution. Lawns can contain bacteria if you don't clean up after your pet, nutrients from leaves and lawn clippings, as well as excess fertilizer. In urban residential areas, rainfall will run off lawns and paved surfaces and end up in stormwater drains. Many storm drains lead directly into lakes and rivers without being filtered first. Paved surfaces can also be sources of pollution for salt, oil, and even garbage. And now let's talk about stream banks and shorelines. Stream banks and shorelines can become unstable due to continuous erosion from runoff and wave action. This causes sediment to end up in our lakes and rivers. Finally, let's talk about agricultural sources of pollution. Just like in residential areas, agricultural areas can have numerous sources of pollution as well, such as sediment from cropland erosion, pesticides, bacteria from animal manure, and nutrients from excess fertilizers. If we don't take any precautions to reduce sources of pollution, our lakes and rivers can end up looking something like this and suffer from water quality issues that affect our drinking water, recreation, and even human and aquatic life. If everyone does their part to reduce pollution, our water can stay clean and safe for generations to come.